Good afternoon YouTube, I am Tyler, and today we're going to be installing the custom clipper mod on my Flashforge A5M. So let's get started. Power up. Alright, and we start this process at the desktop. I'm on this Discord page here for the Flashforge AD5M Clipper mod. I will include a link to that in the description down below. And we are just going to go to the release page and download the latest version of this. Alright, so in the release screen right here, you can scroll down to assets and here you'll have all the files that you'll need to make the mod happen. So, I'm going to want the clipper screen and probably the uninstall file, just in case something goes sideways. Um, so I'm going to download those real quick. Okay, I moved the archive file for the mod to the flash drive that I'm going to use to install it, and we are going to go ahead and extract all of this. Give this a moment to do its thing. I'm not sure how big it is. Oh, that was pretty quick. And now that we have this done, we should be just about ready to go plug it in. As it turns out, I actually didn't need to extract this archive file. I can just leave it the way it is on the drive. So we're going to go ahead and eject this now and go back over to the printer, plug it in, and see what happens. Alrighty, we are back over at the printer now. We're going to go ahead and plug this drive in right here. And I'm going to go around to the back and flip the switch. See what happens. Clipper mod is installing. Please wait. That's a good sign. That was fun. All right, installation successful. Please restart printer. So I guess we should probably pull the drive out. We will shut her down. Give it a couple seconds. Power it back up. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I know my screen's a little crooked. Deal with it. Starting clipper screen. This is a dual boot sort of setup, so it is possible to boot back into the stock FlashForge firmware with this setup um, using some macros that are built into the software or by inserting a file on a flash drive and sticking it on there. How long does this thing take to boot? I mean, it's the first time, so... Whoa! It's in! Okay! Alright, I need to get this thing connected to Wi-Fi, and we can see if we can get it printing. One quick note about the setup process, it is an absolute pain to type on the little keyboard on the screen. Luckily, I've got a little stylus to help me with that, but if you're going to do this, I would highly recommend having like a DS Lite stylus or something of the similar ready to be able to type on that little keyboard because my fat fingers could not do it. Alright, now for slicing. Um, apparently the entire start and end sequence because of this mod in the slicing is completely different from stock so you can't use the stock printer profiles that exist in Orca Slicer. You need to make your own that work with Clipper. So I'm going to go ahead and migrate over a bunch of the settings that I already have on my existing FlashForge profiles and make some new profiles with these new Clipper settings that jive with the new system. So I will be back when I have that all set up and functional. While I've been working on the printer profiles, I came back over to the printer and decided to run the input shaper and decide to see how that works. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run a bed level and see how that works. And maybe by then we'll be ready to start printing. Clipper has shut down on me. 
So, this is interesting. I'm gonna try to restart it and we'll see what happens. All right, I was able to get Clipper restarted. Um, I guess, did it freak out because I didn't have a bed mesh in yet? Because it crashed when it started moving the bed. Let's calibrate it. All right, the bed leveling finished up and it's giving me a little message here. Save configuration, Clipper will reboot. I'll hit accept. Clipper is attempting to start. Ah, we're back. Okay. Now I can try to run the input shaper. Maybe. Uh, more. Input shaper. I'm just going to wait for that auto calibrate button to pop up. There we go. Boop. Measure both. Let's do it. Now we'll see what happens. Alrighty, it seems to be working a little bit better than it did before. It actually completed the first stage of the input shaping test, and it's now going through the second. The noises this thing is making is crazy. Alright, it has completed, and it's given me a bunch of info on the bottom here as it does its calculations. This should be just about done. I need to fix this off-kilter camera here. There we go. It's still a little off. Son of a bitch. Whatever. I'm going to give this another minute, and hopefully it will be a success, and maybe I can finally start printing on this thing. Ah, uh -huh, save configuration. Except, wait for that to restart. Alright, now it's to figure out what it's Wi- or uh, what it's IP address is so I can try a Wi-Fi print. Because I haven't done that with this printer at all yet. Alright, I was having no luck with the network connection stuff, so we're just going to try to print from USB and see how the clipper speed does. We're going to go into here, a clipper test file, and we're going to print it. bed has been leveled, input shaping has been done, so we will see how this goes. Okay, well, something went horribly wrong there, so we're going to go back to the slicer real quick and figure out what happened. Alright, we are trying again, and if, honestly, if this doesn't work, I'm backtracking everything. I'm removing the clipper mod and I'm going back to stock because this has been a headache. I've been working on this almost all day now, and it's driving me up the wall when the stock flash forward firmware was fine. I just had to jump a flash drive to it. It didn't really bother me that much this whole dealing with the clipper settings and having to make all the new profiles it's just it's not for me yeah that print completely errored out too it did the priming line just fine but the second it went to go actually print it lowered the bed a little bit and then it lowered the bed all the way down and it's just not working so i guess it's time to go back to the laptop and show you how to revert this thing back to stock. 
Now, the whole concept of this mod I think is fantastic. I really love the idea. It was super easy to install, but for what I'm trying to do, it's just not gonna work. Um, we are going to grab our flash drive here, plug this sucker back in, and we're gonna work on getting this software uninstalled from my printer. All right, I have copied the file back over to the flash drive for the uninstall, and I'll go ahead and eject this. And go back to the printer. All right, after that epic fail, it's time to get this garbage off my printer. Well, not garbage, but I I can't mess around with this this much. I want to be able to print things and make things. I don't want to have to be tuning things constantly. So we're going to start the uninstall process. Happy noises, we're back. There we go. We are back to the stock firmware again. Wow. So yeah, overall, it was a fun little experience. I love the experiment, but it's not gonna work for my day-to-day -day printing as I need to do it. It's so much messing around with the individual profiles and the errors that I was getting coming out of the printer and it was making some scary noises when it was failing. I don't wanna break anything. I'm gonna use it the way it is for now. If the mod ends up getting better or if anybody knows something that I might've been doing wrong, I might try it again, but in the meantime, I'm gonna just keep doing things the way I have been and just keep working on my design skills and go from there. All right, now that I did all that screwing with the slicer, I need to come back in through here and get it back to normal again because this is, yeah, ridiculous. We're gonna remove the generic printers. Maybe that was the problem, I was trying to use a generic, but, oh well. Let's just clear it all. Confirm. Hello? Maybe I'll just completely reinstall Orca, because I feel like I fucked it at this point. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. I'm gonna go do that real quick. All right, I have Orca Slicer removing here. All right, after a crazy amount of screwing around, I was able to successfully get Orca Slicer back to stock configuration with my filaments <laughs> without any of the other BS. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea, but if anybody has suggestions on how to make that go a little bit smoother next time, because it was giving me some unknown command T0 error, and then the print bed would go down to the bottom and make a scary noise when it hit the bottom like it was grounding out. So hopefully it didn't screw anything up. It didn't sound like it did, but you know, hopefully they can make some improvements on that and make it a little bit easier to get into because that was nothing but a headache for my like entire day. All right, now that that disaster is averted, we're gonna go ahead and work on the next piece of my air filtration project um, that I'm designing myself. And this is gonna take eight and a half hours to print and take 400 grams of PETG. So I got a fresh roll of white Sunlu PETG ready to go and hopefully it doesn't fail like my last one. Because, yeah, that's the last one. It had a massive layer shift and somehow managed to actually kick the build plate out of the door. Like it was out of the front of the enclosure. The build plate was hanging out and it was sitting like this inside. So it was fascinating. 
I really don't know what went wrong. I can only assume that it came un unheat unadhered at some point. But it was chaos. So we're gonna try again. All right, we're gonna go ahead and bust out filament change real quick so I can get this intake piece for my project done. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the cord. So we'll go ahead and wait for that to finish heating up. Just another second. Gives me a second to straighten this out because I actually put it in there mid print. Not my best idea, but it worked. All right, filament is in. We're gonna go ahead and let that take its boot. I'm gonna pop that clip off the roll just to make sure it doesn't become a problem. You can get a look in there at the poop. Then I'll just wait for this to finish spinning. Now we can go ahead and get that out of there. Throw that over in my now extensively filled trash can. Because of that big old print fail. And then we're going to come back in with my bed cleaner that I found on printables. And some IPA, this is 91%. Spritz that, because I want it to stick as good as possible. So we're going to make sure it's nice and clean. After the last failure, I'm considering glue sticking it, but I think we're just going to send it. So... We're gonna go ahead and slot that right there. Perfect. And I am going to export that G code file real quick and we'll get it going. Alrighty, now that that IPA on the build plate has had a chance to dry and I got the G code file sliced, we can go ahead and stick the USB in here, go over to models, go to intake. There it is. And um, I'm not sure if the leveling got screwed up in that process at all. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we re-level. Off to the races. It's the next morning, I just pulled the model off of the build plate, pulled all the supports off, and you can see it looks fabulous, and this will be a perfect intake piece for my new air filter project. So if you are interested in hearing more about that, do leave a like and a comment down below, and I will see you next time.